segmentation, targeting, and positioning. So firstly, we will understand the meaning of segmentation. Market segmentation is a concept in economics and marketing. A market segment is a subset of a market made up of people or organizations sharing with one or more characteristics that cause them to demand similar product and or services based on qualities of those products such as price or function. A true market segment meets all of the following criteria. It is distinct from other segments. It is homogeneous within the segment. It responds similarly to a market stimulus and it can be reached by a market intervention. Segment should be viable. Segment should be accessible. Segment should be measurable. Consumers can be segmented in four main ways. Demographics, that is age, income, gender, geography. Contribution, that is revenues, costs, profit and lifetime value. Behavior, that is product ownership, spend, transaction frequency and channel use. Attitudes, that is, technology optimism, brand loyalty, trust, financial self-direction. Demographics are easy to gather, but are rarely the best predictors of behavior. Contribution tells you who matters, but can only be measured for existing customers, and doesn't explain motivation behavior is relatively easy to gather, but changes quickly and is often the very thing that you are trying to influence. Attitudes are the hardest to measure but change slowly and explain consumers' behavior and how to influence it. The most widely employed model of market segmentation comprise of seven steps, which are Step 1 is to identify and name the broad market. The biggest challenge is to find the right balance for your business Use your experience, knowledge and common sense to estimate if the market you have just identified earlier is not too narrow or too broad for you. Step 2 is to identify and make an inventory of potential customers needs. What you have to figure out is what needs the customers from the broad market identified earlier might have. The more possible needs you can come up with the better. Step 3 is to formulate narrower markets. Start building a column with dimensions of the major need you try to cover. This will make it easier for you to decide if a given person should be included in the first segment or you should form a new segment. There is no exact formula on how to form narrow markets. Use your best judgments and experience. Step 4 is to identify the determining dimensions. Carefully review the list resulted from the previous step. Try to identify those that carry a determining power. Reviewing the needs and attitudes of those you included within each market segment can help you figure out the determining dimensions. Step 5 is to name possible segment markets. You have identified the determining dimensions of your market segments. Now review them one by one and give them an appropriate name. A good way of naming these markets is to rely on the most important determining dimension. Step 6 is to evaluate the behavior of market segments. You might notice that while most segments have similar needs, there are still different needs. Understanding the difference and acting upon it is the key to achieve success using competitive offerings. Step 7 is to estimate the size of each market segment. Each segment identified, named and studied during the previous stages should finally be given an estimate size, even if for lack of data it is only a rough estimate. Thus you can make proper strategies according. After studying this lesson, we should be able to analyze the process of market segmentation, compare and contrast differentiated and undifferentiated marketing, understand targeting, discuss the process of positioning. Now let's discuss the difference between differentiated and undifferentiated marketing. Undifferentiated market is that which ignores segmentation and called mass marketing, while differentiated market is that which is segmented on different bases. There is single strategy for whole market in undifferentiated marketing 
but differentiated marketing has different strategies for each segment like different strategy for youth and adults by a garment company. Concentrated marketing implied that the organization had only one product and it aimed the product at the whole market. But differentiated market is assumed to have more than one product line or model. A lot of cost can be cut in terms of having low inventory, fewer models, and there was an economy of sale in the manufacturing process in undifferentiated marketing. But differentiated marketing involves more cost. In undifferentiated market, communication is not very complicated and mass media can be used. But the situation is quite opposite in differentiated marketing. Now let's discuss niche marketing. A niche market is the subset of the market on which a specific product is focusing. Therefore, the market niche defines the specific product features aimed at satisfying specific market needs as well as the price range, production quality and the demographics that it is intended to impact. Every single product that is on sale can be defined by its niche market. Small capital providers usually opt for a niche market with narrow demographics as a measure of increasing their gain margins. Taking on a new niche can be a low risk way to grow your business as long as you keep in mind several important rules. Meet their unique needs, that is, identify the unique needs of your potential audience and look for ways to tailor your product or service to meet them. Say the right thing, that is, when approaching a new market niche, it's imperative to speak their language. In other words, you should understand the market's hot buttons and be prepared to communicate with the target group as an understanding member, but not as an outsider. Always test market. That is, before moving ahead, assess the direct competitors you'll find in the new market niche and determine how you will position against them. For an overview, it's best to conduct a competitive analysis by reviewing competitors' ads, brochures, and websites, looking for their key selling points along with pricing delivery and other service characteristics. Now the turn comes to discuss market targeting. A target market or target audience is a group of customers that the business has decided to aim its marketing efforts and ultimately its merchandise. A well-defined target market is the first element to a marketing strategy. The target market and the marketing mix variables of product, place, Promotion and price are the two elements of a marketing mix strategy that determines the success of a product in the marketplace. Once these distinct customers have been defined, a marketing mix strategy of product, distribution, promotion and price can be built by the business to satisfy the target market. Marketeers have outlined three basic strategies to satisfy target markets. Undifferentiated marketing or mass marketing, differentiated marketing, and concentrated marketing. The first is the single segment with single product, that is, concentrated marketing. In other words, the marketer targets a single product offering at a single segment in a market with many segments. For example, British Airways Concorde is a high value product aimed specifically at business people and tourists willing to pay more for speed. Secondly, the marketer could ignore the differences in the segments and choose to aim a single product at all segments, that is the whole market or undifferentiated marketing. This is typical in mass marketing or where differentiation is less important than cost. Finally, there is multi-segment approach that is differentiated marketing. Here a marketer will target a variety of different segments with a series of differentiated products. This is typical in the motor industry. Here, there are a variety of products such as diesel, four-wheel drive, sports saloons, and so on. The third and final part of the segment target position, STP process, is positioning. Positioning is undoubtedly one of the simplest and most useful tools to marketers. After segmenting a market and then targeting a consumer, you would proceed to position a product within the market. Positioning is all about perception. 
the term positioning refers to the consumer's perception of a product or service in relation to its competitors. You need to ask yourself what is the position of the product in the mind of the consumer. As perception differs from person to person, so do the results of the positioning map. X for example, what you perceive as quality, value for money, etc. and is different to my perception. However, there will be similarities. Products or services are mapped together on a positionary map. This allows them to be compared and contrasted in relation to each other. This is the main strength of this tool. Marketeers decide upon a competitive position which enables them to distinguish their own products from the offerings of their competition. Generally, the product positioning process involves defining the market in which the product or brand will compete, identifying the attributes that define the product space, collecting information from a sample of customers about their perceptions of each product on relevant attributes, determine each product's share of mind, Determine each product's current location in the product space. Determine the target market's preferred combination of attributes. Examine the fit between the position of your product, the position of the ideal vector. Position. The process is similar for positioning your company services. Services, however, don't have the physical attributes of products, that is, we can feel them or touch them or show nice product pictures. So you need to ask first your customers and then yourself, what value do clients get from my services? How are they better off from doing business with me? Also ask, is there a characteristic that makes my services different? Write out the value customers derive and the attributes your services offer to create the first draft of your positioning. Test it on people who don't really know what you do or what you sell. Watch their facial expressions and listen for their response. When they want to know more because you have picked their interest and started a conversation, you will know you are on the right track. Now let us check if you have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Mass market is that which ignores segmentation, right or wrong. Right. Every single product that is on sale can be defined by its niche market. Right or wrong? Right. A position market is a group of customers that the business has decided to aim its marketing efforts and ultimately its merchandise. Right or wrong? Wrong. STP process includes segmentation and positioning. Right or wrong? Wrong. Let's revise. The process of identifying market segments, selecting one or more of them and developing a marketing mix to meet their needs is known as target marketing. Market segmentation is defined as dividing a market into distinct groups of buyers with different needs, characteristics or behavior that might require separate services or marketing mixes. An effective segment is one which is measurable, actionable, accessible, sustainable, competitive, and differentiable. There are several ways in which a service marketer can segment the market. Demographics, geography, psychographics, and behavioristic. Demographic segmentation can be done on the basis of age, gender, family, income, and education. Under geographic segmentation, the market can be segmented on the basis of countries, states, cities, districts, urban areas, rural areas, etc. Behavioristic segmentation can be done based on benefits, attitudes, motivation, usage rate, loyalty, etc. Undifferentiated marketing is providing the same service to all the segments and differentiated marketing refers to segmenting the market and designing specialized services for each segment. As contrast, niche marketing to catering to specific needs to a particular segment. Positioning is a battle for the consumer's mind share. The chosen segment is to be targeted for customers' acquisition and retention. A service can be positioned on a variety of factors such as features or attributes, 
use or application, user, benefits, competitor, price, and quality. Positioning map is an extremely useful tool to visually depict what the consumers think of available brands with their features. It consists of a grid on two axes with product attributes on each one of them.